CC and Romeo, Monday through Saturday on 93.5 K-Day. Nine three five K Day C C and Romeo. Mm. I'm so excited, Rome. This is a big moment for me. You already know. Yeah, man. I'm super excited. We have Mo Prem Shakur in here, Tupac's brother. First of all, thank you so much for making the time to come and visit our little morning show because we really do highly respect you and we're excited. Oh, peace and blessings, love to everybody on the west side. C C Romeo J Dub the whole K Day fam. You know what I'm saying? I heard we that. We came up together. Say this. And when you, together. Yeah, and when you walked in, we were playing Tupac. It was just ironic that it was on when you walked in. So right. you should. Sets the whole Hey, yo, that's my here. theme music, yo. Wow. Dear mama. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I love it. And you know. Tupac is my theme music. We all have memories, okay? We all have memories uh, of Tupac through his music. Um, but I want to ask you specifically because nobody got memories like you do. Hmm. Um, what is one of your favorite memories that you're always going to remember about your brother? Hmm. Oh, sugar, honey, iced tea. Uh, <laughs> I got a, quite a few, yeah. but um, I will never, you know, in the early days, I will never forget um, when, when Keep Your Head Up was number one, performing with Pac, Keep your head up while I was number one live on stage. Mm. Wow. All across the country. You know what I'm saying? The the, the love from the people. Uh for him. You know what I mean? Yes. That that was a that was a beautiful feeling. You know, sometimes we handed out roses, you know, Pac was, you know what I'm saying? Pac was with ladies, you know what I mean? Ladies man. Right, right. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> you know, Cause yeah. the ladies love Pac, let yeah. me tell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, man. So I gotta ask you this. When did you realize that Tupac was that special and will become a legend. Mm. At what point? Yes. Was it before he even got <laughs> signed? Was it in the middle of a studio session? When? Uh, nah, I um I, I had uh, um I was waiting for my first record to come out. Mm -hmm. Feels good. Shout out to Tony, Tony, Tony. And um me and Pac was like, we need to start writing some music together. All right? So we was gonna write this song, all right? And uh I was having writer's block, straight up. I finally got a verse down, finally <laughs> got it down. And then we met up, he's like, all right, kick your shit. And, oh, pardon no, me. You're, you're good. good. Yeah. Give kick us your all, shit, We want yes. all that. We want yeah. all that. And, uh, <laughs> and I dropped it, <laughs> and then he kicked his. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> holy shit. I was like, whoa, whoa. Baby bro got the goods. All right, all okay. right, we rolling. We rolling like Bart, as they say in the bed. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that was, that was, yeah. So it was early that moment days, when he spit days. that bar for you, and you was like, yo, okay, this is special. Yeah, because I knew he was, he, he had been rapping, you know, uh, um, with Strictly Dope. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Strictly Dope, you know, the, his early groups, and, you know, he was rapping in uh, Atlanta mm -hmm. uh, as, uh, as a young dude, because we came out of New York. You know, we were birthed into hip hop. <laughs> Yeah. You know what I mean? We were there at the birth of hip hop, so it was in us. So, you know, we, we, we were just, I was just older, you know? And, um, yeah, man. You were older, but who was more protective? Like, were you more protective of Pac, or was he more protective of you? Or was it both? Um, <laughs> it was, it was both, but Pac was more, uh, <laughs> visible about it he was more uh, uh, uh you know uh, uh, uh stern about it uh you know he was young yeah he was learning how to handle them feelings you know you know get away from my brother yeah he was yeah. way protective of you yeah we was fire and nice we was fire and nice he was the hot i was cool you know what i mean so yeah that that worked for quite some time but he was, he was also a young man becoming a man yeah. That's true. And neither one of us were full <laughs> full grown men yet. You know, we were right. getting there. So it was it was a lot. It was a lot. Now you talked about being on stage with him and, and when you uh performed Keep Your Head Up and just the love that he received. Now let's take it back though and let's talk about when you were in the studio with him. Is there one song that, you know, as soon as you hear it, it reminds you of being in the studio with Pac and being in there long hours and you're like, yo, this song takes me back to that night in the studio. Ah, man, there's, there's there's a lot of those and there's a lot of different studios. Um, 
uh, uh, I forgot the name of the studio, but we were listening to uh, uh, So Many Tears. Mm. With Shock, it was this record was finally done. Mm-hmm. And we all met up with Shock at the studio because Shock, rest in peace, much love to Shock and Digital. Um, and, you know, because Shock was produced it, and once we heard it, it was like, oh my god, oh my god, did you hear that? You know, it because it was so, you know, because we've been making music. The clarity, the the, the it was like right. almost perfect. Yeah, Pac was perfect on it to us. It's like, oh my God, what is going to happen after this? No, yeah. you know what yeah. I mean. He was perfect to the when world. You hear so many tears. It wasn't a single like that, but mm. that song was. And it hit. Like, like, yeah. like when you heard so many tears, you felt it, and boom, it was relatable boom, to boom. everybody. And everybody could go boom, back to boom. that moment where you're like, <laughs> man, I feel this. I went through the same bullshit. Yeah, you feel yeah. me? Yeah. No, I would have loved to be in that session to hear that, man. Because when we hear it now over and over again, we know what it does to us. But for that moment, saying it's complete, run that back. Yeah. And Shock was a musician, musician's musician. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he was play, actually play, playing them keys and playing them instruments. So, uh, you know, he, he was real proud. He's, you know. Dope. I love it. Um, yeah, man. Mark Great memories. Secure, hanging out with the KD Morning Show, CC and Romeo. So KD. talk about the making of a TV miniseries you produced, Who Killed Tupac? Uh, who Killed Tupac? That was, you know, a lot of these projects, you don't have control. You just know they happening. Right. You know, because as a public figure, sometimes you don't have control. Uh, uh, ben Krupp was a friend of ours. And because um, we have been working on different legal stuff over the years, mm-hmm. and, you know, and um, <clears throat> um, he was a part of it. We had connections with him. We, so we want to try to make it the best we could. You know what I mean? If we can't stop it, you know what I mean? Get down and try to make it the best you can. Use mm-hmm. what power you have. And that's that's what I've been trying to do and exercise in that game. And, and you know what I'm saying? Music placement, getting some music there. You know what I mean? Um growing my career <laughs> you did and yeah. if you can't stop it then the the least you can do especially as family you want to make sure that it's accurate mm-hmm. as much as possible yes absolutely as much as possible because we can't control the whole world mm-hmm. you know what i mean you can't really control what people do but you can try to be the best influence you can right you know well so let you me got. ask you does this sometimes surprise you? Because, I mean, you're probably used to it already, but there has to be moments where you get this moment where you're like, yo, this is crazy. How the world still embraces your brother. <laughs> How the world still loves him. How they keep him alive. He's got diehard fans. <laughs> diehard fans. And they still... Machiavelli are... to Don till I'm gone. He maintained. Right. You know why it's not that funny? Because he was saying this shit while he was alive. Yeah, he he was. was telling us. We was every, we were talking about it to each other. Nigga, I'm a legend. I heard Heard that. I'm doing. I'm putting in mine. You better put in yours, cause I'm a legend already. You know what I mean? He was telling him. He's like, he, and he like he knew he was gonna pass early. Mm. You know, certain things he was preparing us for. He, he was a powerful spirit. He He's, was. He did. And you're saying that? Did you guys ever have that conversation? Like, and what was that like? Him saying, "I'm not gonna be here for a long time." Uh, we we had a lot of conversations. Um, a lot of that was wrapped up in. The lives we was living on okay. the streets, being soldiers, coming from the revolution, seeing so many of our uh, our loved ones incarcerated, murdered, uh, you know what I mean, set up, all kind of things. So, you know, it, it, uh, the odds was against us. Mm. Yeah. Young black males. You know, Pac was always riding for the young black males. The poor disenfranchised, black and brown, we got to stay down. Mm-hmm. You dig? So that's where it comes from, the hard living. And you we know, soldiers, we fight, we die. When we dig? always talk about Tupac, like there's one thing that always comes to my mind, and what it is is that growing up listening to Tupac and bumping his music and watching his interviews and watching him on TV, he always spoke about social injustice. He always stuck up for black and brown. But what I loved about it was he said it in a way where we could understand what was going on in the world. And I love that. And it, and, it, and it goes to show his intelligence, his passion, his character, and his straight up, he gave zero fucks. You know what I'm saying? And that's mm-hmm. what I loved about Pac. True indeed. True indeed. That's what that thug life was about. 
the common denominator was economics. It's poor people, disenfranchised people all over the globe. You know what I mean? We we we're just amongst the most famous. Yeah. <laughs> of them. You right. know what I mean? We got to stick together if we want to ensure some type of survival for our kids. You and know what I mean? He's so fascinating. Like Pac is so fascinating. We we all miss him and, and we all have our spo- our special moments about what we miss about Pac, but he's your brother. He's your little brother. Like what is the one thing that you miss most about your brother? Laughing, mm. he was he was a funny dude. When in those good times and those good moments, we had fun. We had fun, you know. We we, we did have fun, you know. Pac was <laughs> Pac was funny. He, he he's a jokester. He was a it's, it's hard. Maybe it's hard for some people to see, mm-hmm. but through that you catch Pac on his, his good days. Oh man, that's why you know. You, you fall in love with the kid because he was everybody wanted to be around him because when it was those times were happening it yeah. was on it was popping it was good we go, <laughs> go, we go to the club yes. we gonna drink right. we gonna smoke we gonna hang out then, then we go to the next club then we go to the after party oh my then, god yeah yeah it, it, ain't, it ain't stop shit don't stop wrote the song about it. You know what I mean? <laughs> 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 we kept it moving. Man, you definitely kept it moving. And you talk about his sense of humor, man. So was he more the jokester or he liked to receive the joke? Like, did he like when the joke was on him when y'all was, like, going at each other? Or I, don't, he I don't see Pac liking the joke on him. I don't know, though. No, nah, he ain't like the joke on him. <laughs> no, no. He liked the joke on others. He's like, I'm not yeah. receiving, but I'm going to give you these jokes. Like, uh, shout out to my man, my man Big Country Style uh, uh-huh. with, the, with the black food, food truck on 102nd of Vermont. My man Big Country Style. He was down with us, and that was like this. You know how in a crew there's one main person mm-hmm. or two main people that always fuck with each other? Yes. Yep. That was him. That was him. Country <laughs> call him Peanut Head. I call him Big Goat Mouth. Uh, <laughs> and then it wouldn't stop, you know. Oh, I love it. I love it. Let me ask you. Shout be- out to my man Goat Mouth. Before we wrap up this interview, um, what do you think about people? And, and I have a certain feeling about it. You know, there's a lot of people that say Pac is alive. And he's living somewhere off an island. And I feel like those are people that really love Tupac so much they can't let him go. Mm-hmm. And they're hanging on to him. And they're hanging on to any hope that they have. What do you say to those people? Let him keep that. Okay. Let him keep that. That's what Pac talked about. This is what he wanted to do. Yes. This is what he wanted to do. This is the plan. That was the plan. You know what I mean? Um, and he is alive. His spirit is always alive. Mm. As you yeah. see... 20 some years later. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's why there's a uh, uh, Tupac at two on K Day. Okay. Come on now. Hello? Oh he just say yes, that. He did. Just say that. Yes. Poof is in the pudding. Come on now. Poof is in the pudding. <laughs> Because when he on, people are listening. I'm talking about from an old school concert to people like 12 and 13 years old. They will sing lyric for lyric Tupac song today. And that's what's so fascinating and amazing about what he left us, man. No really doubt. is. No doubt. I mean, that's powerful. So I'm hearing you're going to be releasing NFTs related to Tupac. You want to talk about that to k Nation? Um, yeah. I, I mean, it's the new. I'm sure everybody heard about crypto and all yeah. that. You know, learn about it. People, be be aware of what's going on in the world because it ain't going nowhere. The sooner you are ahead of the game, on top of the game, the better. Mm-hmm. It's a new uh, a non-fungible token. It's a cu- form of currency. Mm-hmm. Um, and NFTs, you could only buy and sell with crypto, but then you could cash out in cash. Um, you have to go to like this site called MetaMask, um, make a wallet, then go to Rarible. That's where my NFTs are. Um, it's a collectible site, one of the top collectible sites. And, um, you know, I got a lot of years in the game. My, you know, roots in the legacy. People want to see, people want to know. Because I only put my, my, my joints online. I don't put my shit online and all that. That's, it's, it's, you know, and I don't want to give them my originals. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So NFTs kind of work for me, you dig? Right. So I could take it and then get my art on on it, do something fly with it, make it funny or whatever. And still be able to keep your original. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, um, we're going to see what it do. People want me to do it. I'm going to see what that do. You know, we're working on some film projects. 
yeah, some big things, you know. And not even that, but we were talking about at the museum that's mm-hmm. going to be opening up. Yeah. They're going to have like a pop-up, like a Tupac museum. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm excited about that. I think that you can, you can buy the tickets now, but um, it doesn't uh, open until January, I, I think. I think so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. My man Kamel up in the Bay, um, he helped organize that. Um, but yeah, we're trying to still stay moving. Stay positive and progressive. The law is doing their thing. Um, yeah, man. Well, wow. listen, I'm going to need you to call Camille up and let him know that uh, yeah, CC and Romeo, we're trying to get there on the first day. We're trying to be in the front of the line yeah, for that Yeah, you one. got that pool mo. Let's go. Because we got that <laughs> 2 o'clock Tupac up in here at K-Day, okay. so we're trying to be the two in line up front. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that I mean. Yeah, man. Look, man, it is a blessing to have yes. you in studio and just sharing the stories and how you're keeping it alive, his spirit. Like you said, it's alive, and people know that. Because when you mentioned earlier how people went to way Tupac spoke, people yeah. can relate. It's like going to church on Sunday. Some pastors, they don't get the message, too, because of how they deliver it. Right. Everything Tupac delivered, we received. And that's why we will forever hold on to that, bro. Mm-hmm. That's powerful. Mm-hmm. And K-Day salutes you, Mo Prim. We thank you so much for coming in. And it's an honor for us to have you in the studio today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Shout out to K-Day. J Dubs, the whole crew. Yeah. Um, much love to California. It's Thug Life, baby. The West Side, LA. He said West Side uh, till I die. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, shout out to my man Bishop Lamont. Uh, Yo. Yes. You know, that's my dude. We getting ready to do some fly music too. You know what I mean? Um, I'm still, you know, I'm still relevant in the game. We got some stuff dropping. Um okay. my man Big Mike Mike, D Skills. Love y'all. You know what I mean? We in here. Come <laughs> on.